damage is something that you'll find in most games, whether that is being applied to the player, the character, an enemy, or an object within the world. It's something you'll usually find in a game, so that's what we're going to be covering today, once again in C++. Now, before we dive straight into that, though, as always, there's a, there are a few things I just want to go over and explain uh, why we're approaching things in certain ways, or that we will be by the end of this video. So, in the blueprints, what we're going to do is this will be for our character class that we'll be adding the damage events on. And this is going to give us some really interesting insights, again, how we can bind dynamic events to existing functions in C++. And it's kind of one of the only ways that you can do damage in C++ if you want to use the inbuilt functionality the engine provides. Now, the other thing is that we could always just do something very simple like calling our blueprint event inside of the character class itself. The any damage event is the one that we'll be using. But what I wanted to do, and this is what I wanted to explain, is that we'll be dropping this into its own component. And going forward, especially for this project and a lot of the things that I will be uh, looking to do on the channel, uh, I'm going to try and make the approaches very modular. And again, kind of like I mentioned in previous playlists that I've done, uh, my videos won't necessarily, or the series themselves, won't necessarily be the fastest way to get something done, uh, but I'm trying to make them the most efficient and kind of future-proof ways. So the intention here is we're going to drop all of these into modules. They'll all have and house their own very specific logic, which means that, for instance, we're going to make a health component, and that could be dropped onto absolutely anything else in the game then, not just the character class. And we'll be doing similar things for any kind of like skills that we have. We'd have a skills component experience and things like that can all be dropped into their own things so that they can be very very reusable so i just thought i'd get that out of the way um, as i can already imagine there'll be questions of asking why we're not just doing it straight onto the character because it's easier and faster uh, and it definitely is easier to, and faster to implement uh, but generally it's not easier and faster to keep things up to date and manage things in larger projects that way so what we're going to do to create this is like we've done with the previous classes we're going to go to our c folder we're going to right click here create a new class and what we want is an actor component now if you haven't seen these before i'm just going to very quickly go back here the difference you'll see that the other one we, the other option we had is a scene component so the scene component is uh, all of these will be scene components these are things which will be visible uh, potentially physically rendered in the editor or in the game so these are going to be things that you can see or that you can move about when you're in the editor or the game and uh, what we'll be making is an actor component which is what the character movement component is so this is something you can attach to another actor but it won't have any uh, physical presence in the world but it will have its own functionality running in the background so what we're going to do like i said come back in here uh, we'll create a new C++ class. I'm going to go to the actor component. I'm going to come down and if we give this a name, I'm going to stick with the previous naming conventions, which I believe was uh, YT, and then I'll call this one health component. And just make sure that we have a folder for this. So I'm going to put this in its own health folder and we'll put this in the public private separator folder as well. So if we just hit create class on that and let that do its thing, Okay, so if that all compiled, you should be brought back into the header or code file. I'm in the uh, code file at the moment. So I'm just going to go over to the header class, and you can see these are pretty much the same as a normal C++ class anyway. Now, what we want to do here is I think we will definitely be able to get rid of the tick function this time. So to begin with, I'm just going to make sure that we remove this from the header and the code file. Uh, just to save a little bit of performance, we won't need the tick in a health component because this should be very reactive. Whereas I didn't think we'd need it for the character and because we're doing constant tracing and checking where we're looking, we did uh, need the tick function. A health component should only ever really be called or doing an update of some sort if health is being given or taken away. So we should be pretty safe to remove that this time. And then with that done, we can remove the public header section there. I'm just going to add a few variables and then a function for the actual taking of damage. So the first one I want is going to be our float, which is going to be the uh, the maximum or the default health the character will have. And I'm going to make this a U property. I'll give this the specifiers of edit anywhere, blueprint read write, and a category which just be called health. And that will be useful. So we can set this in blueprint in the editor so we can easily and quickly update what the default health will be. Uh, the other value we're going to worry about is our main health, so the current health that we have. Now, this is the one we want to kind of hide away, but we will need to expose it to reference it, but we don't want this to be edited outside of the uh, the code file here. So we'll add a new float called health. 
Again, this will need a U property, and this one will just have the specifier of blueprint read only. Okay, so that just means that whilst we're doing our updates and our checks, uh, we'll be able to at least query what the current health is whenever we need it. So this is going to be useful for things like in the next couple of videos, I want to go over widgets and UMG, uh, implementing a health bar into the game. And this will help us keep track of what the health is for the uh, separated health bar. So the final thing we want is our function. Now, like we've done previously, if you're following through the actual playlist in order, we will be using a delegate call on this. So this needs to be a U function. Um, and I'm going to show you where to get the specifier for this. So we're going to be overriding the on any damage function. I think it's actually called on take damage. And I couldn't actually find this like I did previously on Google through the documentation. I don't think it has a documentation fully ready for this yet for some reason. I definitely didn't have the signature anywhere available to just copy and paste. So what we want to do is it's the on take any damage function. So we're just going to find it in here instead on the right hand side. And we'll give this a quick search. It can take a little while. This is going to go through the uh, the library and it will find the owning class that will have this function, which I believe should be an actor class. So we can see that this is nested under actor. We've got the on take any damage function here. And what we want to do is navigate to the F take any damage signature. So we can right click on that and go to definition. And this will give us the signature that we want here. So this is just, again, a little bit faster. You can just copy along. I will give all of this in the video anyway. Uh, but if you're like me and you don't like typing everything out, mostly because I'm almost guaranteed to uh, make a typo at some point in this, then what we can do is we can just copy this and we'll paste this back into the new function we're about to make in our file. So I'm going to call this one, uh, this is a void function, and I'm going to call this one take damage. And like I said, we're just going to paste in the signature that we've just pulled here. Now, the only problem with doing it this way and not from the documentation on Google, which is why I said in the previous video, that's my preferred way to do it, is this has a comma after every single word that we have here. So what we want to do is take out every other comma so that we'll have the type and the name of the type. So we'll leave that comma and we'll just do the same for all of the rest, like so. So that signature is now usable. And then the final thing is, like I said, we do need to make sure that this is a U function. It doesn't need any specifiers, but it will not compile properly if this isn't a U function. At least when we do the uh, dynamic binding in a moment, it won't compile. This will be fine for now. Uh, as soon as we make this a dynamic binding, we'll have issues if it's not a uh, U function. Okay, so if we go back over to the code file, this is going to be very simple. This won't take very long to implement at all. So in the construction script, uh, we can turn the tick to false. And then we're just going to pop and then down here, I'm just going to populate the health value. So I'm going to give the default health a value of 100. And this is just done here because this will, when we compile this and we can see this in the editor, this will uh, make the default value there 100 as well. Uh, and generally, especially if you're working with other people, maybe people who aren't uh, programmers, but they need to have some input on this type of thing. Having a default value gives them a sense of what a sensible value would be. So for instance, if they just saw health for a vehicle, they wouldn't know whether that should be a thousand, 10,000, uh, 10, depending on the values that you know you're going to be working with when adding and, and subtracting damage. So if you put a value of 100, then they would know that if they wanted to double another character's health, then 200 would be what they're looking to do. Things like that just makes it a little bit more sensible that time. And then now that we have a value there, what we can also do is we can say that health equals default health. Okay, so now we've filled in what the actual health of the player will be. So this is going to be, again, the one that we're keeping track of and the one which will decide whether the player is alive or dead. So if we move down to the begin play, what we then want to do is we want to get a reference to the owning um, actor or pawn, because remember, this is a component. So we need to make the binding to the take any damage function to be bound to its owner's function, not the function of a component because it just it doesn't have access to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say a actor so that we can get a reference to something which we're just going to call owner. And this will be just simply calling the function get owner. Okay, so if we have a valid owner returned, then what we want to do is we're going to say that the whenever the take any damage function gets called on the owner class, which will be our character class, uh, we want to bind that function. So add a dynamic bind binding. Uh, and we've done all of that before, so I'm just going to type this one out. Just pause here, in fact, there's one thing which is slightly different, is because this is a component, uh, not actually an actor, this is going to have 
uh, the letter U prefix, as we can actually see up here already. So whereas previously we've been working with things which have got the A and then the YouTube character base, for instance, this will be U uh, YT health component. So just make sure that you get that correct here after the ampersand. So this will be U Y T health component. And then we're just going to bind this to the function that we've just created, which is called take damage. Okay, so that is the function binding done. Very final thing is just going to pop back over to the header. I'm going to grab the take damage function and I'm going to add the implementation of this. So we'll create that function. And then we're just going to very quickly do the final bit of logic in our new function here. So all that we want to do is we're going to first of all check that we are actually taking an amount of damage. So I'm just going to say if damage is less than zero, then we'll return. Uh, and of course, damage is just a value which is passed in here. This is very uh, similar. I've not actually gone over this when I implemented it, but all of this is very similar to what you'd get in blueprints. So these are going to be so these are going to be the uh, values returned on a node when you call the any damage event. So we've got the damage, the damage type, the instigator. Uh, that's the reason we, we pass these into the signature. So again, they're kind of self-explanatory. Um, and I'm just going to tidy that up. We could leave that, but that's not really the way that we code. So I'm just going to drop that into the curly braces. And then finally, all we're going to do, if that isn't the case, so we have actually received a valid amount of damage, I'm just going to say that we want to take the damage away from the current health and I'm going to clamp this. So we're just going to say health equals uh, F math. We're going to get the clamp function and then it's just going to be equal to health minus damage. And this will be clamped to zero and the maximum value will be our default health. Okay. And then finally, because we're not going to have our, just realized that I named that my owner because I think I said that at some point um, and we actually just went to the naming convention owner. So that's fine. Just needed to make sure we spell that correctly. Um, but then back down here, we just want to make sure as well that we can see this working. Uh, there's a very quick way that will show you that we can test damage in Unreal. Uh, but because we don't have a health bar, I'm just going to print this to, to the screen um, and we can also use a print string as well. So in fact, I'll leave this, I'll compile this and we'll just do it from a print string instead. That should work equally well. Because one thing to note is that where we've been using the G engine and the log to screen in the past, the actor components I don't believe have access to that. So we'd need to uh, we'd need to use a Unreal log, which only goes into the logging window. And I find that a little bit annoying to go back and forward looking at different panels. Uh, where possible, I like to just quickly print things to screen for debugging purposes. So I'm going to leave the debugging out of this, and we'll just do that in the Blueprint class. Okay, so with all of that done, we have a successful build. So I'm just going to go back to the engine. Hopefully all of our updates have taken place. So if we add a new component, we can either scroll until we find ours, um, or we can just type health, as I'm not too sure where it would appear there, uh, because we didn't give it a custom category or anything. So we'll just add our YT health component. We can see if we select this, that has all in fact gone through uh, with a hot reload, which is great. So we have our default health at 100. And the first test that we're going to do is we're just going to drag in the component. So you can do this like with any other actor component in the same way you can drag in uh, control, drag in the character movement, and we can get some values from this. So I want to find out the health value. So we can see um, the different specifiers that we've uh, provided have worked successfully here as well. So we can get and set the default health, which is what I said we wanted, but we can only get the health value. So we can't set this, we can't override it in Blueprint. All of the logic for this will be in C++. But we can check this, which is useful. So we're going to check the current health. And I want to do just a simple print string on begin play. And we're going to pass, we'll pass in the health value. That will convert it to a string for us. We can compile that. And if we press play now, we are apparently doing this on tick. But the current health is 100, which is exactly what we'd expect. Um, I, for some reason, I wasn't actually paying attention. I was just talking. Uh, and we did that on the trace forward event. So I'm going to dump that back on the begin play, like I said. And that way we should only see this once when we begin play. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually check that this is being calculated properly when we have damage provided. So the way that we can do this, we will use the uh, the blueprint function. And again, this is only temporary, but we know that this is the function which is being overridden. So we already know that when this gets called, we're also going to call our C++ function in the health component anyway. So we may as well just quickly use this for a quick debug. So again, I'm going to do a print string whenever we take damage. 
like I've done above, in fact, I could have just copied and pasted this. Uh, we're just going to get the health again when, whenever damage is taken and we'll print out what the new value is. I'm not being too tidy here because we will be removing all of this very shortly. So finally, to actually have damage displayed, uh, one thing I really like about this is if we go to our modes panel here, we can type pain and they've kindly provided a pain provider for us, which we can drop into the world. Uh, it is invisible, and rather than spending time making a decal or something just to show this, I'm just gonna place it over an object that already exists so I know that it's roughly in that zone. Uh, we can set the amount of d damage that we want to provide every second, so I'm gonna make this 10. Uh, damage type is an option as well, but again, remember we're doing this on any damage, so it doesn't matter, we can leave that. Uh, and the pain interval. So this is just going to damage us whenever we walk over this so if we press play and walk back into that we can see there we go we can every second it's now taking 10 off of our current health and remember although we're checking this in blueprint all of the logic is being updated in c++ uh, and all of this is the kind of thing that we'll be using when we add our widget in the future really all it's going to be doing is taking the logic we have now and updating that into a widget instead but just from that very simple implementation we now have our damage working all in its own little health component and all through c++ logic as well and that will leave us nice and ready for the next video where we will be adding a widget and we'll be creating most of that again in blueprint but adding the calls to uh, display it and stuff in c++ where possible uh, widgets unfortunately are definitely something which are just much much better suited to blueprint it's all very visual anyway like the the placing of, of the objects and everything so it just makes a lot more sense to use it there Okay, so I'm going to leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoyed the video or find it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around that which helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.